Hey y'all, Michelle Raza here with Finding Yourself SATX, coming to you from San Antonio, Texas. And today we're going to continue talking about Dr. Gibson's Recovering from Emotionally Immature Parent. Hopefully you picked up your own copy. We're on chapter 9, heading into chapter 10. So we're about to finish this book. Um, and we have been taking our time here with chapter 9, going through updating your self-concept. If you like these videos and they provide value to you, please do like and subscribe. It really does help us little YouTubers. And check out my website. I'm at www.findingyourselfsatx.com. There in the Contact Us section, you can find my contact information to send me a quick email so that we can schedule your first free consult. There's no cost associated. It's always free and there's no obligation thereafter. Thank you. All right, without further ado, I will go into her last of her five tips or steps for updating your self-concept. So the first was establish your worth. Second, identify your values and life philosophy. Third, fill in the blanks of your self-concept. Four, define your own self-characteristics. And five, find role models and mentors. So today we're going to go over number five. Find role models and mentors. Role models and mentors can help you expand your self-concept. If you want to develop yourself, find people you admire and learn from observing them. Spend time with people who have qualities you want to cultivate in your own self-concept. Think of every relationship as an opportunity to become a better version of yourself and choose companions accordingly. You might be surprised by how many people are willing to be role models or mentors and pass along their wisdom. If you are enthusiastic about becoming more than you are, look for a mentor who you would love to be a part of your journey. For example, take a class with a teacher you like or contact interesting people and local news stories who have inspired you. Figure out what you would like to learn from them so that your requests can be specific. Call or write those you admire and ask whether they would be willing to answer three specific questions about how you could develop more in their areas of strength. If that goes well, you can see whether they could be willing to give guidance and encouragement again sometime when you need it. If you are respectful, specific, and time limited in your approach, many people will be receptive. Now, I would take the, um, the example of when I reached out to, doc to Dr. Gibson to be one of these, uh, you think, you know, these people are published authors, they're experts in their field, they're doctors, so they're not going to have time to respond to me. But she did. She had time and I just let her know that I really admired her work and that I had this little YouTube channel that talked mostly about her works um, and she was very receptive. But in terms of finding a mentor, um, I think that it's very underused to ask someone for an informational interview. So let's say that you're trying to get a job and you know what you want to be, um, but you're entry level and you kind of, this is where you want to be in the future. People love to talk about themselves. So if you ask someone, hey, can I take you to lunch and just do an informational interview with you so that you can tell me about your life and your journey and how you got to where you are? Most people, I mean, it's, so there's a weirdness factor, right? A lot of people might be like, oh, this is weird. Or even like where she's saying the three specific questions, it's like people are immediately going to think, what are you trying to get at? What are you trying to get from me? So maybe stating your purpose. You know, I am, um, I'm a new graduate and where you are in your career is where I would like to be in 10 years. So would it be okay if I took you to lunch and we had an informational interview and you could help me um, un just learn about your career journey so that I can better map my future so that they know where you're coming from? Because um, I will tell you, I've been using some networking platforms and nine out of 10 of those people, they're trying to sell you something. And so you're like, hey, how's it going? Great. How's it going? 
And it doesn't matter if you put on your profile, like, I'm not buying, I'm not selling, I'm not interested in any pyramid schemes or e-commerce, right? It doesn't matter. They're still going to try to sell you. So you kind of start the conversation a little wary because you're like, what do they want? And so if you're cold calling an expert in any field and you're asking them for an informational interview, or even if you're asking for those three questions that Dr. Gibson is talking about, they're going to be a little off put because they don't know where you're coming from. Now, if this is a friend of a friend or a friend of your parents or something like that, where you already have an in, it's a whole different story, but you still, people love to talk about themselves. And so if you go into a, a meeting where you ask someone about their career journey and their life, or even if it's not a career type thing, let's say that somebody is really, really balanced in their life and you admire them for that, asking them how they got to where they are is really, it's underused, I think, in my opinion. Um, everyone wants a job interview. And in that case, you're asking somebody to go into a room and ask you questions. But an informational interview is when you're asking somebody to go into a room or a lunch table, right, somewhere, a cafe, and you're going to ask them questions. And you should treat them to lunch. You should pay for it. Um, so try it out, right? Like, I think the lesson here is to be bold. Like, I remember a story about, um, and this is a career aspiration type story, but it was a person who sent a box to some big executive in, in a company where she wanted to work. And she had her resume and she attached a needle to her resume. And then she filled the box with hay. And so then when he opened it, it was all this hay and he took it out and then he saw the resume with the needle and a note that said, you found the needle in the haystack, right? So something creative, and I think it was a marketing firm, something creative to get the boss's attention to make her stand out. But if she had some type of in, she could have said, hey, I'd like to have an informational interview. Let me find out about how you got to where you are in your career so that in 10 years I can get there too. I would caution against using that very close like if if this is the job that you specifically want today maybe that wouldn't work because it would feel kind of false and transparent like you're trying to get an in for an interview but if you target out like three rolls two rolls up something like that to where it feels safe like you don't actually want anything from this person today you just want to get to know them and that is really your in for mentors modeling growth personal development all that stuff um, so what I've been covering with Dr. Gibson's works, obviously, that's great advice. It's, you know, I admire her a lot. Um, it is only a small piece of what I have, though. I don't give my own stuff away for free. Um, Dr. Gibson's works, you can buy it. I have on my book, it says here $16.95. So for $17, you can go to any bookstore, buy her work, read it and really help yourself in your life. Same with Dr. Gottman, right? He has published works. You can go read them, really help yourself in your life. Um, I'm not there yet. I don't have published works. If I did, I would of course point you to them, but I do have customizable content that I use with each of my clients. So if you're interested in more of this advice tailored to you, um, specific to you, your goals and helping you get there, reach out to me. I'm at www.findingyourselfsatx.com. Take care, y'all. We'll talk more on Thursday. Bye-bye.